superstar Mass Mikkelsen has wowed the world as bad guy Le Chiffre in Bond movie Casino Royale or as TV's Hannibal Lecter. And while he'll soon be in the blockbuster Star Wars spin-off Rogue One, he's also an art house favorite winning the Best Actor Award here in Cannes four years ago. This year, he's back as a member of the festival's prestigious jury. I got a chance to meet up with the actor who's been voted Denmark's sexiest man alive. Mass Mikkelsen, hello. Hello. How are you and the other jury members holding up so far? Have there been any any people you've bonded with in particular? Everyone, actually. Uh, I think it's, it's a fantastic jury. We are different, but there's a, a big rock and roll sense in the jury, spanning from uh, the youngest to the oldest. Uh, there's a lot of energy and a lot of passion for films. Is there any one person in particular you were looking forward to meeting and spending time with that you got a chance to? Well, all of them actually, and and uh, I, but I think we are all cherishing the, the fact that Donald Sutherland is in there. He's a he's a wonderful, humoristic man. He's having beautiful anecdotes about the films he's seen, and uh, yeah, we enjoy his company a lot. Now you won the Best Actor award here in Cannes a few years ago for the Danish film The Hunt. What do you remember about the screening of that film? Because I remember it was very, very rainy that night. It was, yeah, that, we all remember that. <laughs> all the girls, particularly the girls, had dressed themselves up for this this night, and we had we had an old star, an older star who had been waiting 50 years to come to Cannes, and we were just pushed in, and nobody got to walk the red carpet. And but it all turned out good. The film was beautiful, and people loved it. So. <laughs> And you won the Best Actor Award did, yeah. here in Cannes. Do you feel that having won that award gives you a different way of looking at the movies? No, I don't think so. I mean, uh, an award is also always like a little pat on the shoulder. It's, it's for the rainy days when you don't feel that it's going the right way. You can look at it and go, oh. <laughs> At least that one was good, right? Uh, but no, I think I view films like I've always viewed films. Uh, I try to go in there with uh, childish eyes, an open mind, and, and, and let it have an impact on me and not be too professional about it. Now, your career first took off in Denmark thanks to the film Pusher by Nicholas yeah. Winding Refn. He does have a film in competition here, The Neon Demon. Are you going to excuse yourself from those deliberations? We talked about it, uh, and, and you're right, I worked with him four times, uh, but that has been the case before in, uh, with you remembers, and I, I told him that I will definitely go outside the door if there is a, a balance in the votes, uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. Right now, it's not an issue. Now, in your career, you've also crossed over into international movies. You were in King Arthur with Joel Edgerton, who's yeah, also in yeah. a film and competition yeah. loving. Um, King Arthur was your first big international role, but I think you were really well known around the world thanks to Le Chief yeah. in the Bond movie, Casino Royale. Uh, did you actively try and get that part, or did they come find you? Well, it was a phone call, actually. Um, Barbara Broccoli, who's the producer of the film, had watched a Danish film called uh, Open Hearts by Susanne Beer. And that was one of her favorite films, and she just wanted me in that. For some reason, she, I'm playing this very nice man who's a doctor, uh, three kids, but she could see a villain in there somewhere. So that was really nice. I got the chance. The man was Le Chief, private banker to the world's terrorists, which would explain how he could set up a high-stakes poker game at Casino Royale in Montenegro. Now, I read that one of your favorite movies is Taxi Driver. Robert De Niro was honored here in Cannes. Did your yeah. jury status help you get in with him and get to sit next to him at dinner or anything? I, I walked past him. Oh. I did get to see him. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's up there. Uh, if he's not the, the one, he's... And that is my favorite film because it was one of the first um, artistic films I've ever seen, I guess, when I was younger. Uh, and, and it just blew my mind that you can follow a character that we like and then we dislike and we like and dislike. It, it, it made me think a lot. And I thought that was a fantastic thing for a film, film to achieve. Now, your family's here with you in Cannes as well. What do your two kids think about you as an actor, movie star dad? Well, uh, obviously, back home, they don't really feel that. Uh, down here, they can, see, they, can, they can feel it in a different way. Um, but I'm still the dad. I think they take it very easy. Yeah. But why do you say back home? In Denmark, you're a massive star. You're yes. voted sexiest man that of the true. year. Yeah, it's true, like walking the streets and things like that. But down here, it's a little more um, chaotic in the sense that like, photographers everywhere and, and uh, people screaming your name on the streets. So, so it's a little 
damn, that's daddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but I uh, I think they, they they grew up with it. They're they're pretty cool about everything. Yeah. You also have two big tentpole films coming out this summer, yeah. Doctor Strange and the Star Wars spin-off of Rogue One. Now, I, it sneaked out that you are the father of the main character. Yeah, that's a slip of the tongue there. I know, tell yeah. me about it. That wasn't supposed to come out. What happened? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say <laughs> and what I'm allowed to. Uh, I, I think we will get some guidelines once we start doing the, 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 uh, the press on it. Uh, so for now, I would just say, I'm in mean the film. <laughs> You continue to fight. What will you become? But was it a big deal for you to be part of the Star Wars lore? Was that really yeah, a fan course. as a child? You know, I grew up with the Bruce Lee thingy, and, and then other people grew up with the Star Wars genre. Uh, but I've watched them all back to back, as I did with the James Bond when I, when I did that film, but I never watched the Bond film either. Uh, and it's a whole universe that opens up for me that I think is fantastic. Is there a glass ceiling for European actors in Hollywood, would you say? Do you find that you're a bit pigeonholed into certain types of roles? Yeah, I guess I am to a degree, uh, but not always. I mean, uh, I think there's some kind of a rarity in, in, at least in the Star Wars film. Uh, uh, but yes, they, they, they do see us in a special way, and I don't mind that at all. I mean, if the option is not to work in America, it, I will take this any day. Mm. Was there a precise moment when you felt that, hey, I'm not just a big star in Denmark, I am a big star around the world, perhaps a fan encounter in some remote place? You get a hunch when you get uh, fan mail from, from China or from Finland or all of a sudden a certain film or show has been traveling uh, but but yes and walking the streets in various cities all of a sudden there are people who watched not only the big things but but some of the smaller Danish things and then you go that's interesting because if if the bigger things can make people watch the Danish products as well then we achieve something more. Mass Mickelson just to wrap up how do you see these remaining days of the Cannes Film Festival playing out what are you going to be doing? I'm going to watch films, and I'm very excited. It's, we're full of energy every morning, and there are long days, but I, uh, it, it's just a real big honor and a big responsibility to be here. So watching films, Saturday we will decide. That's going to be a tough one, but uh, watching film is the first goal. Mass Mickelson, thank you so much. You're welcome. Let me get some exciting information if I kept that on. <laughs>